Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Overtime with O'Day or whatever. We are back, 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 back again with episode four. We're so excited to be here as always. And I have a few students with me as always. I mean, like, why not? So we have our students ambassadors. Let's just go around the room and say hi. Go ahead, Leif. Uh, hey, what's up? Mm, Leif Muhammad, Crim J Major. Okay. Um, I'm here every episode. Mildred, psych major. Yeah, yeah. my name's Sarah. I'm also a psych major. Hey guys, I'm Sophia, and I'm currently not majoring in it. So. Well, I'm cracking up. Um, but yes, so we are here today. Do we have a um an icebreaker today or no? We didn't plan one. We do, we do, we do. Oh, we do, we do. Okay, she came prepared. We stand. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all know Mildred should be all over the place with, with the with the icebreakers, but she came prepared today. Okay. Um, um but I'm gonna give her the mic. Go ahead, girl. Do you think? Would you rather? Find a hundred dollars floating in a public toilet or five dollars in your pocket. And a question. <laughs> Wait, what what was the question again? Would you rather find a hundred dollars in a floating toilet, a public toilet? Anyway. Hey, inside, like in the water. The toilet, oh. Or five dollars in your pocket. Honestly, the five hundred dollars, I reached for them. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I reach for them. It's not it's I just a hundred. Wait, but is no, there I anything think... inside the toilet? Inside the toilet, like flo- even if there is, like floating around. You going? Are you going to get no, it or not? Like, like is there poop inside the toilet? Is there like? It food? could be. I'll reach for it either way. It's a hundred dollars. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> I said my answer. I said what I said. I would do the five dollars. I feel bad even taking money off the floor. What? Hey, what? but nobody's gonna be in the toilet. Right, no one's claiming the money. Maybe, that, maybe they dropped it when they pulled their pants down. Into the toilet? <sighs> it's the idea. But it's like, if you don't you think take it, someone back else for it, Sarah? it. Huh? They gonna come back for it? I don't know. Exactly, so use it to make your life better. Exactly. No, I feel bad taking Well, I mean, like, all of us can agree that we're gonna reach for these $100. I'm gonna take the yeah. $5 in my pocket. Yeah, except for Sarah. <laughs> I mean, like, okay. should we have a discussion about public um, restrooms, though? Ha- y'all use public restrooms? Uh, I mean, I try not to, but sometimes I, like, really have to go, so. Yeah, I try not to. I mean, like, would you say Penn State is, like, a public restroom? Yeah. It is, yeah. Oh, then I do, because I'll take all, um, <laughs> I use my time wisely. Of upstairs and upstairs. I've done essays in the Penn State bathrooms. Like, <laughs> sitting in the toilet. Half well, an hour. The girls' bathroom is so nasty. It smells so bad. And yeah. the girls, yeah. someone comes yeah. in, they're always moaning and groaning next to me. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I heard that though, that the girls' bathroom at Penn State Abington be nasty. nasty. And the boys' really? bathroom be nasty like that. I would uh, expect. I, I, would, be chill. I thought it'd be Yeah, the other way around, right? I would, yeah. I, will, I will expect the other way around, but our bathroom, like, you know, there's no pee on the floor. Like, usually in public bathrooms, you see, like, pee on the floor. Like, people don't know how there's to no pee. There's no pee on the floor. It's just. It, it doesn't stink or nothing like that. No, um, But then it's again, a... I don't use the one in layers, like, at the one at the top, like, across from the the Luber Commons room. Oh, like, that's, that's, it's, it's, it's that's what I'm talking about. It's I use the one downstairs, like, the one around the library. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Trust me. Mm-mm. No, it's not. Like it. A lot of people don't go to the one downstairs. I don't like it. They don't I know about too many it. Traumatic experiences in the bathroom downstairs. In Penn State. Yeah, and near the intersection. Yeah. No what traumatic experiences you had. No, and there it was throw up in the sink one day. The sink. It was like like. Yo, people be crazy. It was like <laughs> oh, the girls. A roaches near the toilet. Like it was too much. Every time I went in there, it was something. What? Every time I went in there, I don't. I don't like that bathroom. Mm-mm. No, I mean, like, for me personally, I need to use, like, if I gotta go, I gotta go. Like, if my stomach hurt, I gotta go. I can't hold it in. Like, it hurt, and then it's just, I gotta go. Like, one yes. time, we was taking a road trip. It, we had to stop in the middle of the road. <laughs> because it was all gonna come out. And it's like, it's not something that I can control. Like, it's just, it's just one come out. And it hurt, y'all. Like, at the middle of the night, 
the worst feeling. Like you like sleeping and at 3 a.m. you just have like that pain and you're just like, oh, I gotta go. I should have never ate that McDonald's. <laughs> oh my God. That's just be out. Like it's just be pain, like pain, violence. Uh, I don't like this question. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. What's the question? What's the next one? This is very random. Uh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Would you rather, where, would it, where did it go? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? Fur. Scales. <laughs> At least I can feel myself. Like scales, that's like- It's the way I don't know. Like, mm. I think scales. But scales? then like, when it's cold, you can have Put a jacket fur. on, like we do now. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I can trap my fur. Like I can I don't use know. it, I don't like it, sell it. I don't like hair. Skills. It's definitely skills. Like, what about if you hot? You hot, right? And then you got a haircut. What if it's the summertime? Like, like fur, degrees, it's just so inconvenient. <laughs> like, you see how cats lift themselves all day? They're, they're trying to maintain it. Too much. I can shave <laughs> If you have scales, yeah. do you randomly <laughs> shed poop? Yeah. Get you a snake. Possibly. I mean, um, peel off a little skin. <laughs> right, right. Like during the summer, you out in the pool for a little thirty minutes, and you know, two days later, you peeling. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that. That's funny. It'd but be like that. onto our topic today. Ask you want to introduce our topic? Oh yeah. So in episode four, and it's like, what is this? It's Friday, March nineteenth, and this at the beginning of the week, we got some news, some like horrible news. Um, some hate violence happening in Georgia um, with the Asian community. Um, and we decided to like have a discussion around this because um, it's important to have. Um, so did you guys hear the news? Um, I guess we can start like, how did you hear the news? I think we all heard it from social media. I mean, like at, at what time, like, or like um, what day, the next day, the, the day that it happened? Cause it happened. It happened uh, Sunday, Sunday night. I don't really remember. Yeah, Sunday night. It happened Sunday night. But for me, I, I went to sleep day. early on that Sunday. Was it Sunday night? Yeah, it was Sunday night. I went to sleep. Um, Are you sure it was Sunday night? Because I feel like it was probably like on Tuesday or something. No, it was Sunday. Because I, mean, was, remember, I remember coming in on campus on Wednesday and my oh, dad had yeah, like the news on. It was on. definitely Tuesday. Yeah, I'm my, gonna make my dad had the news on and I heard it from there, like in the car. Yeah, so it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. I'm getting confused because I, I'm still like in the last semester idea that I work on Monday, <laughs> but definitely Tuesday. It was Tuesday night, but it, it happened Tuesday night, but I went to sleep early. Like I went to sleep around nine and I think like breaking news happened like around 10 and I went to sleep and then I woke up the next morning and I don't know, like, I know I woke up like the next morning, like in the middle of the night, cause I usually do that. My body just do, does that. And I was just like, let me check Twitter. But I was like, no, something bad party happened. I don't feel like ruining my night. So I went back to sleep and then I woke up again to go to school. I looked at Twitter and then I saw like, like everybody talking about it. I was just like, what? I was shook. That's yeah, it's not the next morning. I think it was Wednesday morning. I thought yeah. I worked with you on Monday for a second. That's why. Yeah. I don't really remember. But... It's crazy because, you know, like, it's been a lot of shootings in Philly. And it's like, it's sad to say, but it was like very, I was used to seeing stuff like that, if you get what I mean, like the headline. But at first I just saw shooting. I just saw like shooting in Georgia. So I'm like, another shooting. But then I realized it was actual, actually like a, a hate, hate crime, you know? And I was like, oh, this is something else now. Yeah. Well, did, you, did you hear what their police chief um, adjusted as? Having a bad day? Yeah, he was saying this shooter was just having a bad day. Mm -hmm. I heard that they couldn't do anything about it because he was, like, addicted to sex or whatever. Like, addicted to what? Like, sex? You guys didn't hear that? I don't know. Cause, like, yeah. I yeah. had these, like, glimpses. Yeah. He was blaming it on, but I'm like... So, like, the first narrative that they the police, like, throw through through yeah the the first narrative that the uh, police threw at the people at the media was like he was addicted to sex yeah he's like a sexual addict 
So that's why he killed, like, went to these spas. Um, How does that correlate? That does not make any and sense. Then, and then they threw the, um, he was having a bad day, like, around six. Um, they're explaining the story. Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 they're not trying to admit that it was a hate crime. So, like, they're trying to say, I mean, like, a hate, like, racist crime. And then they try to spin that story into like it was no, it's because he was a sexual addict, which is like. But like, if he was like, a sexual addict, he would have like raped them or something. That's what, he mm, wouldn't like, have murdered them. So if he did, say if he did um, commit a, a sex crime, are they gonna say he's a he? Oh, he's addicted to sex. Like I'm confused. What does that have to do? I was reading an article on Snapchat, and it was talking about how um, like one of his like uh. People, students who went to uh, high school with him he was like he never seemed violent he was really innocent he wouldn't even cuss in school he was sort of nerdy never seemed violent from what i remember and his father was a, a pastor or something and i'm like it's the fact that you included that for me yeah like the not just trying to thing, humanize him i saw that like the christian the christian and like uh, all that was, stuff was a good you know boy. you know i saw a tweet i think somebody tweeted i don't know who did i think it was like dennis smith who is a poet but they um they said something around um like Christianity is uh, like the worst white man's problem or something, like the worst kind of weapon. Hold up, let me look it up. But <laughs> they was like talking about that, like, are we supposed to like immediately like sympathize with him because he's a Christian and he went to church? Mm-hmm. No, baby girl. That's so stupid. Same thing they did with Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I could get that tweet. But yeah. yeah um, that was any person of color. Like they barely had any patience for the peaceful protesters who weren't even violent. So, and we, I mean, I guess we could talk about like correlate this to what happened in January with the white supremacists um, at the Capitol and how like the police to react to these type of like white hate crimes um, against like the country. Cause essentially it's like against the country if you think about it in communities here. Um, but how like the police reacts because when the Capitol thing happened, I found out like I, like two hours later because I was reading, and I don't be on my phone when I read. But um, I remember it was like around four o'clock, and I was just like, and they they decided to put the curfew in Washington D.C. And I was just like, okay, they're gonna put this curfew. But I was just like in my head, I'm like, the police is not gonna act as violent as they did during the summer because when they put those curfews, remember they was like. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they was going at them like with the gas, mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. um, bullets, and, and all of that. And y'all heard those bangs during the summer? Like, it was like boom, boom. Y'all didn't hear those? Oh, and they yes, were, like, but it's like, like I just feel like we, we never found out what it was. We it, it was like um somebody was saying there was uh people going into like ATMs. But I don't think it was that. I think it was, think it think was just like no, they was going up ATMs. No, like, so like it was minutes? like every five minutes, it was just like a boom, boom every ATM. Boom. Yeah, I heard that. Like, and it was like for three or five days. It went like continuous every night. And I was seeing on Twitter that they was like going around like like these trucks with like sound um systems that was throwing oh. that sound to scare people. Um, which was weird. But um, but when I was seeing the white supremacist stuff, um, I was just like, the police is not gonna react when they put this cur- curfew in, they're not gonna react as violent as it did when the um when they did in the summer. So we could like touch upon um that and how the police reacts to these situations. It's just crazy to me. Um, the person who shot the Asian woman. So I don't really know the story that well because what I seen was he went to the store, he got the gun that day. In that salon incident? Because there was two, there was there's two different incidents with uh, yeah. Leif, keep talking about these two different incidents. Tell us, please. There, there was okay, so one in ATL uh, <laughs> with a uh, salon where the guy shot the eight woman, and then you have the one in San Francisco with the yeah. elderly woman who got beat. Oh. Well, she beat. Uh, she sent her attackers to the hospital. Oh, that was in California, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, she should. San yeah. Francisco. I believe. Yeah, she, um, she did. I don't know the behind the story. I saw the tweet um in the video. Yeah, it's not the video. Mm-hmm. But most of these, um, cause like y'all see that um since the pandemic hit, um violence against uh, Asian uh, people and Asian Americans has gone on 150%. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Ever since um, Ch- um, Trump referred to the Kung Fu. COVID mm-hmm. as as the um, the Chinese virus, it was like r- racist tweets went up like it's against Asians like what I think fifteen percent something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all because of Trump. I found a tweet, y'all. He said, um, Dennis Smith, it's not he, sorry, it's a day. He's um, they use uh, they damn pronouns. But they said, can y'all stop uh, dehumanizing the racist murderer train for one um, second? Goddamn, who gives a, a flying F about his church unless we go and talk about how Christ is one of the deadliest weapons white folks have? That's why um, I, I was meaning to say, but like, I, I was just like, yes, like white people in this Christianity narrative, like they just throw that like to try uh, to make us like sympathize and be like, no, like how can a Christian be like this bad murderer? But let's get into the, um, what we was talking about before this? The, um, we could talk about language and how language is like really powerful and how like one, that whole um, narrative that he was spreading around, like this is a China virus, um, that's their problem is their fault. Um, has like led up to this, like this violence against the Asian community. Um, and the same thing could be said towards um, when he was running for president. Um, he was spreading this narrative that the Mexican people who were crossing the border were like rapists and then they're going to come in your yeah. house and then they're going to rape your white daughter and this, that, and the third. And they'll bring drugs to the community. And so like it creates an anxiety in like the white space in the white community that that makes them react. They'd be like, oh my God, no, like our peaceful spaces are being disturbed. And so they react in these violent ways um, as if they're like some type of savior or like a messiah, um, that they're doing the white community a favor in some way. Um, And that's like what their language does. Like it incites those violent accidents, I mean, not accident, incidents. Well, to me, in my opinion, I just feel like Trump just uh, woke a dormant uh, racism in America. Because, like, they were these people were, it's not like they weren't racist. They were always racist. They always had hate towards the other and this fear against the other. And all he did was just um, light the match and threw it to the, the fuel. For sure. Um, I read a book. I don't know. I think I talked about this in one of these episodes, but I read a book where it was talking about, um, I think it was Begin Again. Um, yeah. Um, um, but in the book, it was talking about how um, in 2008, 2010, I think it was 2010, a study came out that white people were going to become a minority in a yeah. few months. Um, and that created an anxiety in the white community. I think this was before Trump in 2010. And that created a fear. It's just like white people are going to be the minority. We're going to lose our power. And so like the reason behind Trump getting elected was because um, of the anxiety of like, oh my God, if we don't get a president, actual president to stop this, then our spaces are going to be disturbed because of these racist ideas that the other or people who are not white are going to uh, disrupt our spaces, our peace. And we're going to have like a bad country and a bad government. Actually, there's a book. I was told about in middle school, actually, in eighth grade, I think it was called The Tanning of America. And it was just uh, basically describing how um, the darkening of America and how, like you said, whites will be the minority by, I believe, 2050. Yeah, I think it was 2050. But hmm. yeah, so like, it's the anxiety of like white people losing their power and like these racial other people are coming in. But it's just like, it's false. It's a false narrative. You know, I mean, they should be scared. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> they should be scared because, oh, somebody left. No, I raised oh, my she, hand. You, oh, you raised your hand. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so like, they just like getting um scared. And I mean, I guess they should be scared because they're not going to have the power in like electing people. Like, we already see this every four years where, um, where states are turning. You know, Georgia is an example. Mm-hmm. Arizona is an example. That's all because of that rise in, um, in um, people of color in those areas. Um, you know, Arizona because of the growth in Latinx people, in uh, Georgia because of the black population there. Um, so they should be scared or whatever. All right, go ahead, Madrid. 
Okay, hold on. I gotta I'm trying to pull something up because my friend he sent this tweet to um the group chat yesterday, and someone posted this on Twitter. You know, Twitter can be so problematic. But it says, the Asian community has never stood by the black community. Just stay quiet like they do to us. I hate that we go to lunch to defend others. Now, it's really sad because there are a lot of people with that mindset thinking like, oh, they never stood for us when a lot of them have. That's the, there is a lot of racism in the, um, in the Asian community, but there's a lot of, um, What's the word? Xenophobia? Am yeah. I saying it right? Xenophobia. In the black community, like, don't act innocent. It, it goes, it goes both ways, and I hate the fact that people are like, oh, if they don't stand for us, then no one's gonna stand for nobody. Then, if that's the like, it's so sad because when do we come to this conclusion? It's just like, can we just help each other? And it's sad because there are a lot of people with that mindset, especially you know, one person, people who are very small minded, they look at Twitter tweets and just be like that's true let me go with that and they pick violence instead mm -hmm. of anything else and it's like now you're part of the problem go ahead leave actually this quote from uh they're in the holocaust in italy um and it was a christian white male that said it and he was like oh first they went for the jews and i didn't say anything uh and then they went for the gays i didn't say anything and then they went for the um the priests, I didn't say anything, and, and they went for the um, disabled, I didn't say anything, and eventually they went to, for me, and there was no one to say anything, so yeah, the whole helping out thing. Um, like, I, I don't think, like, um, I have been seeing those tweets, that, that's not the mm -hmm. only one, like, even, like, big people have been saying that about, like, this um, Black people not speaking up about Asian people, and, like, why is it our job, and I don't think it's, like, like as you said, I think it's uh, every like everyone should support each other and like these moments of like what's like, right horrible, is right. What's wrong is yeah, wrong. like it, when one community suffers, I think everybody should immediately suffer because of it and try to uh, find ways to support those communities either way. Because if we're gonna live on this bubble of like oh because they don't support us, then we're not gonna support them. Then it's just like like as you said, Mildred, it's part of the problem. But also we had to. Um, acknowledge those things um, and speak about them because they're important. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of TikToks like trying to minimize the Asian problems or deflecting. Um, I saw one that was saying um, Asians, all you guys get is like people saying Kung flu and stuff like that. But in my community, um, and then to start talking about their community problems or personal problems. And although those are important, number one, like we said, um, exacerbating those stereotypes can lead to hate crimes. Mm. Number two, I feel like you can't just say Black Lives Matter and then be racist to all other minority groups. Like, it's not just a the pick and choose thing. Mm -hmm. like, if you're going to be about I, it, then be about it. Like, There's a lot of people that I follow. I saw, like, when um, in May, they, they never they never um, spread awareness about racism, but now there's their stop Asian hate. But then, um, then I see a lot of people who um, the other way around and it's kind of just like have the same energy for both like I'm I'm just I'm just so confused like but and then for a lot of people it's just like oh it's a trend to them this is trendy let me post a hashtag real, real fast because a lot of people are doing yeah. it it's just like that's interesting though um, I never thought about it that way but I think like you bring up a good idea of like people in the summer who didn't speak then and now are speaking up um, about this and it's just like what is the cause of speaking up against like black violence it, is it easier to talk about asian crimes than black crimes mm -hmm. um and the anxiety around that like that cost i never thought about that but that could be a good essay <laughs> um but yeah i mean i think like just as i said if a community is suffering in like the american space then everybody should be sympathizing and supporting each other. Mm -hmm. And and then that could be hard because at the end of the day, there are like those issues of um, xenophobia, um, anti-blackness, um, the anxiety of like, it, I can't really, I'm not gonna support in this, during the summer um, anti-black crimes, but now in the anti-Asian crime, I'm gonna talk about it because it's easier to talk about anti-Asian Asian crime than black crimes, um, hate crimes, I mean, but 
Yeah, I think it all comes down to like acknowledging and and stepping up in the situations. Have y'all heard about, um, well, have you ever heard of hood feminism? Yeah, there's a book about that. Has everyone else heard? I know, I know what, Oscar heard about it. What did you say again? I was reading. What hood feminism? feminism? Hood feminism? Hood, hood feminism. feminism. No, what is that? Book feminism? I feel like it's going to change our topic Like around. a hood? Like oh, oh. hood feminism, oh, but like hood. hood, like I'm in the hood. Well, I can Google it. I don't know. I, yeah, there's a book about it. Um, I will but be I haven't read it. Be our next episode. But yeah. bring up an idea. What 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 are you trying to say? Well, um, we were talking about it in my special topics class, and that's kind of like when I first kind of heard about, heard about it, <laughs> heard about it, and um. Basically, I don't know what book we were reading, but um, this girl, her grandma was like born way before feminism was ever really like created like the movement. And she was saying, she was talking about how her grandma was a feminism without the movement. Like she'd been a feminism on her own as a black woman because the mainstream feminism don't really like include minority women. Like when you look at mainstream feminism, it's just white women and kind of like their problems the white feminism is completely different from intersectional feminism because um the white woman um during the 1920s i think when the um the 25th amendment or the what amendment is the woman rights one the ones to vote the 25th i think it is but that amendment to make a woman vote white women weren't um weren't included black women in that or asian women and even now like i never hear um from mainstream feminism like make our community safer or stuff about education because they already have that you already live in that in that house you that safe neighborhood or you already you know it's kind of just like it's just about being inclusive but yeah it's a lot that goes into it and I feel like definitely should be like I guess half of an episode at least but I'll read the book let me stop (laughs) but it's but yeah, definitely a topic that needs to talk about because, and I think we're gonna have our feminist um, program next Thursday, and um, we do have some videos that talk about this um, intersectionality and like that difference between white feminism and black feminism, and including women of color who are oppressed from both groups. You have even in the Latinx community, you have machismo being a big thing, um, and women are being oppressed not only from um, the men's side, uh, the patriarchy, but also because of their race, you know, brown, Latinx women, Afro-Latinas, they're being mm-hmm. oppressed because of their race as well. Um, but no, it's a big thing in the Latinx community, um, violence against women um, in Mexico. The, there was just a protest the other day about it in Mexico um, because a lot of women are being killed by men. Um, mm-hmm. But that's another topic. That's a whole other episode, feminism. But yeah, so Going back to the um, Asian hate crime, um, most uh, all of them were women. There's been a discussion around um, the the humanization, the humanization. Why can I say that word right? But y'all know what I mean. Mm-hmm. The humanization of Asian women and what the media keeps um, well, creating a narrative around um, Asian women being these sexual figures um, instead of like actually uh, recognizing their work and like their humanity. Um, so that's a, we could talk about that. Um, in the story that I was reading, supposedly they said like he was on his way to kill more people, Mm. like when he left and yeah, I don't know how they know that. I don't know if he said, like, I just want to know, like, has he said anything? Like what was like, what's going on here? So the place, the place he shot him at was. Uh, nail salon, he went to three right? different places, I think, or two. It was three. It was three. It was three different places. He went, like, he went on a spree. And he was supposed to go to Florida or something. Because, you know, Georgia and Florida are right next to each other. Um, And keep doing the thing. And he was 21, y'all. But um, that still doesn't erase the fact. That's crazy. Um, but, like, also, like, um, the media and the focus on him has been, um. I think it has been wrong. I mean, we see more pictures about him in the media than about the six victims or eight victims that he shot. I mean, I don't even know the names of the women. I don't know him. I yeah, mean, I don't I know his know name either because I refuse to like read those narratives about him. Um, 
but I don't know the names of the victims. But let me Google them real quick. But it's like, I just want to know how, where, like, the information about him, like him having an addiction to sex or whatever. Like, I just want to know, is he saying this stuff? Like, is, mm. I don't know, I, think, you know I, think, I don't know what to believe. Um, no, because I think as the police, like, interviewed him yeah. and they, you know, like, they was just like, okay, why you did this? So, like, then he, he, he probably was talking about um, that whole, like, Asian woman being these sexual figures. But I think they were sexu- um, sexual workers, if I'm not wrong these massage places and I'm not wrong but I don't know it doesn't I mean it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter that's why anything um so like they they were just like trying to de- is so coming up from that the, the the narrative of dehumanizing these women because they're being portrayed as these sexual figures who don't deserve to be sympathized with let's sympathize with the murderer instead of the woman just like how um what's his name uh I can't remember the african-american that was killed anyways there was a one minor african-american that was killed a couple years ago and they were saying oh he w-, and they released um the first thing that the police did was release a video of him uh stealing of ship lofton ship lofton what the heck ship ship lofton oh. shoplifting <laughs> but yeah they're just, kind of spin the call, Girl, uh, basically, they're just calling him a criminal and basically what they were implying is that like he deserved what he got or right, tra- they're trying to make people not sympathize. Sympathize, yo! I can't speak English today. But yeah, it all comes down. To, it all comes down to the police, honestly, and how yeah. they address the situation from the beginning. God damn! Maybe We're it was on. actually a mix of them. Yeah. So that the suspect here, according to New York Times, the suspect told the police that he had a sexual addiction and had carried out the shootings at the massage parlors. To eliminate his temptations. And that's on quotes. I'm sorry. What? This is, wait, so he killed the women just so he can eliminate, like, so, he, so wouldn't, he wouldn't. His desires to have sex with them. But that's that, still, that, that makes still no doesn't sense. erase the fact that these are Asian women and he specifically and intentionally them. went to these yeah. Asian the parlors with the idea of like, I'm gonna kill these Asian women because I, I found them attractive. So it's at the end of the day, is a racist sexual crime. Okay, so, and then the New York Times says, he also said that he had frequented, frequented massage parlors in the past and lodged the attacks as a form of vengeance. All but one of the victims were women, the police said. Mm-hmm. I, I think all, he um all but one of the victims were women. I think one of them. But one of them was a boy. I think so. Hmm. Interesting. But yeah, um, the Asian crimes across the country. So like, I guess we could touch upon in these last two minutes, um, talk about ways to like step up and like how, um, we can support. So I'm gonna leave some donation stuff at the bottom in the link. Please click those if you have some like coin, a dollar or something. Please donate to the spaces because it's very important to support it. Um, and also like having these type of conversations, even though we're like on Zoom, um, it's very important. Talk to your friends, um, talk to your family members, tell them that this is happening, um, and find ways to um, spread the word. Because if we just keep like putting the narrative down then um this is never gonna get like solved um, because it's a real issue um but also like if you see any um asian hate going around or asian hate narratives going around about china virus and this that and the third please you gotta speak up um because then you're part of the problem um i know at penn state Aventon we do have a big asian american community and a big asian community in general and um if you definitely see something going around i know next fall we're gonna um yeah, the university is gonna turn to to in person please um you have to speak up in those situations um because then the narrative is just gonna keep happening the hate is gonna keep happening so yeah do y'all any have any additions to that about ways to support and advocate yeah like you said if you see something say something um that you wouldn't want it to happen to yourself and even if you're not a minority yourself, if you're um, 
white or Caucasian or whatever, and, you, and you're from that privileged class, um, just try to speak up for those who can't, who don't have a voice for themselves, and just show that you care and just eliminate hate. And that's on period. Anything else we want to touch upon before we close out? Educate your peers. Educate your peers. Thank you for over time with us. Um, we're going to see you next week. I hope y'all are liking these episodes. This is episode four. Um, and, you know, we try and bring these important conversations to our campus virtually, even though we're not in person. But I hope these videos have been helpful um, and have taught you something or like, you know, it definitely has helped us like circulate some ideas that we never like thought about. But please subscribe to our channel. Watch out um, uh, for more programs um, that we're going to have on social media. You know, like they don't see you, but whatever. About programs on social media, follow us on Instagram at Oday PSU Ab. And to, you know, keep up with our um, office and subscribe, hit the like button, um, and definitely um, hit that bell notification so you can get a notification every time we put, upload. Thank, Thank you for all the time. time.